everyone, welcome to another Beans Bags and Handicrafts Company's tutorial. This time I have made the Pelican Tote by Bagstock Designs. So this is the fancy version. There's two versions on her website. I can't remember if the fancy version was a free add-on. I bought it like a year ago, so I don't really remember. But there are instructions on her site somewhere for the fancy version. So the difference between this one and the regular uh, Pelican Tote is the regular Pelican Tote, you either could have it closed with a magnetic snap or um, a flap that closes over with a magnetic snap. This one has the recessed zipper and then these fancy straps. So the straps in the original are actually in the seam allowance there where this one is not. So it's a great bag. It's great for beginners all the way up to expert. You have your front pocket here and then inside, You have a zipper pocket. It's a simple bag, but it's really, isn't that pug fabric cute? <laughs> um, so I chose to make this one in all vinyl on the outside. Um, on the side seams, it was a little bit challenging to get through a little bit. Oh, well, it wasn't on my industrial, but it might be on a domestic. So keep that in mind if you do it all in vinyl. It's just where these here are. Okay, for interfacing in this, I use Fashion Fuse for the lining pieces. Uh, it's similar to an SF-101 and a woven fuse. Just a medium weight woven interfacing, which I get at uh, cleanersupply.ca. And I use the By Annie Soft and Stable Foam, sew-in foam, for the exterior pieces. Other than that, that is all the interfacing this took. Um, as per usual, in my video, I include all of my mistakes so we can learn from them. So make sure you watch the video through first so you know where I made those errors. I think the only errors I made was I made my rivets too high here, so it made top stitching hard. But yeah, and I used a number five zipper here instead of a number three, which made my height different. But it all works out in the end, so that is it. I hope uh, you guys enjoyed this tutorial. And I will see you on the other side. Bye. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we want to start our front zipper pocket panel on the exterior of the bag. So you're going to take your front center bottom piece and you're going to take your number five zipper. I like to cut my zipper a little bit longer for this just so I can pull this pull over to the side so it makes it easier for sewing um, at this point for that. So you want to take this, make sure you have it the right side up, make sure you're not, you don't have it this way, it should be longer this way than this way. Take your zipper, put them right sides together, and then clip that on top like this. Just like that and then you're going to take it to your sewing machine and you're going to sew the zipper to the panel along here with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Okay so I've gone ahead and done that so our zipper is still face down. Next step you want to do is take your pocket lining and this adorable little pugs, put it right sides together and line it up with that main panel like this. Now you could probably do this all in one step. I don't just because I don't, especially because I'm doing this in all vinyl. Uh, I didn't want my zipper to slip. So I guess I could have used tape or whatever. But this is just how I like to do it. And it's how the pattern calls for it as well. Okay, and then I'm gonna take this to my machine I'm going to put it this side down and I'm going to follow the stitching along here that I did previously when I sewed the front to the zipper. Okay, so I've gone ahead and done that. And then what we want to do is we want to take the lining, we want to flip it over and then have the two panels wrong sides together. Now, if you're using cotton here, you can definitely go and press this. I'm going to just have to finger press it because I don't want to melt my vinyl. I have them together and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this to the machine and I am going to top stitch this across here. So that's all done so you can see how I have it top stitched along there and on the back. And then to close the pocket up you want to push it, uh, put it so it's right side down and you want to bring the lining up like this. 
and you're going to line it up with the top of the this side of the zipper here. It's not attached to any other vinyl or anything like that. I'm just going to baste it on there. So pin it and make sure it's even here along the sides. And then I'm going to go sew along the top here with a 1 8 of an inch seam allowance to baste the lining, pocket lining, to the zipper. Okay, so there we have it. We have we attached the zipper at the top here. Then, again, this is making the front zipper pocket. So now we want to take our front centerpiece. We want to put it right sides together on top of that zipper. So we're sandwiching in between um, that lining that we just sewn. making sure that the edges line up perfectly with this panel here. You can already see how fast this is coming and we're almost on the front panel. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to sew across this top panel with a quarter inch seam allowance. And then I'm going to flip it up like this so we're not going to have any lining with it. And what I'm going to do is I am going to sew up this side. So this is going to close up the pocket on the bottom. I'm going to sew up this side. Make sure your pull is into the middle here. Otherwise your pull will be outside and that's just no good top stitch along the top here and then back down the other side. So again you're going to sew the zipper on here with a quarter inch seam allowance. You're going to finger press this or press it if it's caught up and then for the top stitching we're at the same time we're going to do a basting to close up the pocket under here. So we're going to put the sides together, eighth of an inch seam allowance all the way up here. I like to do a little back tack over the zipper, top stitch across the top, Come back down over the zipper and do another little back stitch all the way down to close up the pocket. I'm gonna go do that off camera and then there we go. So I've top stitched along the top there. I've also basted all the way down the sides here to solidify that pocket closed. So at this point, again, I hope you make sure that your pull is inside those lines. Otherwise you'll cut it off and you'll be very unhappy. But at this point, you can go ahead and you can trim away the excess zipper tape make it even with the panel like so and there's our front center panel okay so we've moved over to the sewing machine because it's just going to be easier to show this part here so here's our front panel that we just finished so now we want to put the sides on so we cut these side things I got a got glue or something on there so we're going to try to build it like that. So what we want to do is we want to take these side panels and we want to put it right sides together. And stitch it on or put it on. Now mine might be a little bit too tall because of the zipper I used because I used a number three or number five. So what I'll do is I'll end up just trimming it off, up off the top afterwards to make it all one length. So just line it up along the bottom here, the bottom side there. I don't know if you can see. There we go. Got a new tripod stand and it just is not being my friend. that down. I actually just went off camera to put in my half inch line here because I don't have markings on my typing here. So I'm going to sew that down with a half inch seam allowance.
Again, mine's looking like it's too tall here, but that's okay. We're going to trim that up in a little bit here. Just over the zipper, I just like to go back and forth a little bit just to solidify that zipper a little bit more. And then what we want to do, I'm just going to double check. This seam here, we want to have staying out this way. So you're going to fold this out, keeping that seam going this way. Again, if you're using cotton, you can go ahead and press this. I'm using vinyl, so I'm just going to finger press it best I can. So our seam allowance is going this way, and we are going to top stitch along here. just like that. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do the same with the other side. And then I'm going to take my back center panel piece and it's done exactly the same except we don't have the zipper. You just take your two side panels, put them together and top stitch down each side. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do that off camera and then we will come back and I'll tell you what I did. Okay, so this is what the front and back panels. Again, I'm too long on here and that's because I used the number five zipper. If you used the number three, it would have been smaller. So I'm just gonna go and even this out along here and make it all one. And then this is the back done just like the front but without the zipper. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go take these and I'm gonna attach them to foam. So just um, base the foam on or whatever interfacing you're using. If you're fusing it, go ahead and fuse it. If you're using Decaville Light, do whatever is that I use by any soft and stable. So I'm going to go put that on here now. And I am also going to, because this is a good time to do it. Once the foam is on, I'm going to put my nameplate here. So if uh, you do do the nameplates, this would be a good time to put them on. Okay. So there's my back panel. Attach the foam and my front panel with my nameplate on it attached to the foam. So the next step is now to do the darts. So I put your one of your panels wrong side up and then get your dart tracing template out and put it along. Let's see if you can see it on here. Line it up with the bottom of the bag here. And then just take a pen and trace that out like that. And then on the other side, flip it over and do the same on the other corner. And you'll also do this on the other main panel. Like so. And then what you want to do is you want to fold this. And you kind of want to make it so the lines that you drew, I don't know if you can see, match up. So there to there. Just kind of eyeball it and see, make sure the point comes there. And then I just put a couple of clips to hold it whoops, in place like that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to sew from there to there, making sure you backstitch at each side. Ouch. Okay. And then the same on the other side. You can match up the points, match up the markings, like that. If you're using fabric, you could probably press it if you wanted to so it stays on that fold good. Okay, 
Okay, so what I do before I trim this, I just kind of pop it out to make sure I like the way the dart looks and look how perfect that is. And what I do is just take the scissors and just trim that down to about a quarter of an inch just to reduce that look like that on each side. And then poke them out. And you can see the shape that is going to give the bottom of the bag. So go ahead and do that with your other panel and then we'll come back to the next step. Okay, so we're back at the table here because we are going to install the straps. Um, if you're doing the fancy straps like I am, this is how you do it. If you were doing it without the fancy straps, you wouldn't have had these ends on here and you could just, you would be just sewing them into the seams. So you would put them against here and then uh, base them on there. Um, but I am doing the fancy straps, so. So what I've gone ahead and done, you can probably see the holes here. This is because uh, what's going to hold this on is rivets. So I did one hole half of an inch up from the edge of the strap connector. And then from that hole to that hole is another three quarters of an inch. So I punched those ahead of time. And then what I'm going to do is use my double sided tape. and those holes are going to pretty much mark a guide. We're going to have to punch it again, but it's just easier to know where you're going to be putting them that way. So take my double-sided tape, take it off, wet my ruler, and what I want to do is measure 2.75 or 2 and 3 quarters down from the top here. So we're going to be laying this right up against that seam there. So measure down 2.75 like that and then take this I set up my ruler right up against that seam there and then take your strap and line it up with the ruler just like that and stick it down with the glue so it's right up against that seam that seam is right there and then you're gonna make this come around make sure it doesn't get twisted grab some more double-sided tape And do the same on the other side. 2.75 down. Make sure your strap's not twisted. And then line it up against that seam. It's not quite up against that seam there. Just like that. I'm just going to double check. 2.75. 2.75 and then I'm going to go ahead and rivet those into place and then do the same with the exterior panel the exterior back panel okay so you can see we have everything our straps on there so next step is to make finish off our exterior so what we want to do is you're going to have to take one and kind of pop the darts out like this and then you're going to put them together like this right sides together so the first thing I do is go ahead and match up the darts if you can open up those seams that'll just make it a little bit easier especially if you're on a domestic to go through them so I go ahead and I match up the darts first on both sides You want them to be as close as they can to each other there to make a seamless line. Okay, and then finish up the bottom. They should all fit into each other perfectly. Clip. Also match up these right here where our front panels were. I like to match up those seams as well just so it ends up being making sure our lines match once we turn it out. Match up the 
some on this side. Lots of clips to hold those corners in place because they're kind of round. Okay, and then once you've got the bottom done, match up the top corners. Oops, I'm going to just trim this foam back a little bit. distribute all that fabric. Do the same on the other side. Again, I'm going to cut this foam, it's just going a little bit too high up. Just like that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go around the whole bag, sewing it together with a half inch seam allowance. to the corner make sure you're feeling for any tucks or puckers because you don't want that to be there so kind of make sure you're pressing it all flat you know how corners can be they can be a real pain in the you know what <laughs> for any puckers I'm kind of going blind so you kind of really got to rely on your sense of touch there nice and slow around the corners to get a nice shape there I myself work much much better at square bags not necessarily rounded bags Then what I like to do is I just like to reach in and go along that seam and make sure there are no skip stitches. If there's a skip stitch, you're going to feel a hole. And there are none, and I can also feel there were no puckers. So you could turn it out right side out to see before you do this and then turn it back inside out, but I think it's fine. And then what you want to do is trim that seam allowance down to a quarter of an inch to reduce the bulk. Be very careful not to cut your stitches. 
basting stitches is fine. You're pretty much cutting those out, but don't cut your actual stitches stitches. go ahead and turn it inside out. I'm using vinyl so it's super stiff. <laughs> all those seams especially on that corner you're gonna see it makes a nice square corner if you point this out and I did not do that it was a little bit off there but it's not too bad I can live with that and this one here is dead on so it's pretty much just boxing those quarters of those corners so there is the exterior of the bag. So we're going to go over to um, the cutting table and I will show you how to start with the um, zipper panels. All right, so now we are going to work on our recessed zipper panels. I do mine a little bit different than what's in the pattern. Um, I just have a way that I like to do them um, to get nice neat corners. So. I have my two exterior ones and my two lining ones. So on each side, I like to take my 3 8 of an inch tape, put one on each side of all four panels. You could also just press in if you weren't using vinyl, just using cotton, uh, three eighths on each side. So I'll make this two. And with cotton, I most definitely can, just my iron's not heated up right now. So I'm just gonna use tape. If you're using a domestic machine, um, this tape probably won't work for you, but you could always use Dritz Wash Away Wonder Tape to tape it down. Um, it comes in quarter of an inch, so you could probably just use a couple pieces side by side if you wanted to. Or you could just measure it in and finger press it. So we're going to fold each of those ends in. Just to that tape. Use that tape as a guide. So the main thing that's important with these is that they are all the same, exact same length once they're folded in. So you may have to adjust a little bit if you fold it in wrong. I'm actually just going to do a lining and a mean right now. Facing did not fuse very good. Like so, and then just make sure that they are indeed the same length, which they are. Okay. Now I went ahead and did this already. Um, on many of my tutorials, you see me how I turn these zippers in. I just turn them in at a 90 degree angle and I fold them up upon themselves and I just stitch it. You can hold it that way. You could just fold it over. This is just the way that I like to do it. So I went ahead and did that already. Okay, so what we wanna do is we wanna take the lining one, I believe. Let me double check. It's all open up. That, yeah, and we want to mark in three eighths of an inch 
from the edge. I am just making sure. Okay, got three eighths of an inch. One, two, three, and mark it. And that is where we are going to place our zipper. So our zipper is going onto the lining piece, wrong side to its right, to the lining piece right side. And we're just going to line up at that line and pin it on. So, and then I'm going to take my exterior one and sandwich it in between. And you can do this in two steps. I'm going to attempt to do it in one to save some time. Make sure that they are lining up perfectly. So yeah, they're lined up perfect. Both sides. If you've never done one of these before, definitely um, please do go and sew that before adding this on. But zipper panels are usually pretty easy and it's a small piece, so... Okay, and then I'm just going to double check. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead. It calls for doing three eighths of an inch seam allowance all the way down there, and then we will come okay, back. Okay, so I went and did that. I actually only did it with a quarter inch seam allowance. I couldn't, I didn't, I didn't want to put on my zipper, but I admit uh, I was lazy. So I did a quarter of an inch seam allowance, which it will be just fine that way. Okay, so now what we want to do, you can trim back just this one side a little bit. I always leave a little bit hanging there just because I think it's better just in case. If you de have done this with cotton, you can definitely press this with an iron, but you're going to turn it out like this, and then you're going to take the lining piece and turn it out as well. If you followed the pattern, you would have sewed all these already, and you'd be turning it um, and poking out the corners, but my corners never ever turn out good when I do that. So make sure that they line up along the side here and pin it, or clip it, I mean. Same with this, pulling it nice and taut, making sure they're the same length, and pin it there. And then along this bottom here, just finger press it all, make sure it all lines up along this bottom. Clip all the raw edges together. Okay, and then I'm going to take it back to the machine. Make sure I've pulled my lining tight. I'm going to top stitch. An eighth of an inch seam allowance down here and then baste the raw edges together to form one piece with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so there's our finished zipper panel. I put on a little zipper end that I get from Emmeline Bags onto the end of it and I've also marked the centers of that panel which we're going to need. Um, I also went ahead and did the interior zipper pocket. I do have a tutorial in my bag makers 101 class how I do my zipper pockets because I do them a little bit different than most patterns because I use my pockets leave them open on the bottom to help with turning so I leave the gap uh, to turn my bags I turn them through the bottom but to sew up the bottom I pull it through the zipper pocket so I have don't get that ridge when when you go to close it up so you'll see how I how I do that as we go along so if you want to see how I put together my zipper pocket please do check check out that tutorial and it will be in there all right so what we need to do we will start with 
this one. So I've marked the center top just with a little notch there um, to find our centers for this so we know how this is going to go on. So what we want to do is we want to lay the lining main panel right side up and our zipper panel right side up. Keeping in mind, so most purses you want to open from left to right. So you're going to have to decide at this point which of your main panels you want to be the front or the back of the purse. I like my zipper pocket to be at the back of the purse. So that's why I have chosen to do it first. So if you've chosen this one for the back of your purse, you want to lay this down so the zipper pull is on the left. And then just line up your notches. Actually, just let me double. I just had to double check, but no, I'm doing it right. So line up your notches. Clip it on. believe we're going to stitch this to this with a quarter inch seam allowance. Let me just double check. Yes. So we're going to sew this, base this on with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And you will know if you've done it right, if, because this is going to be the top of the bag that you see for the zipper. So as long as when the zipper's open, you see the lining, you have done it right. Okay. So then the next step is, you're going to take your lining top panel, and I chose to have it in the vinyl because when you're looking down on the bag you're going to see it's going to be continuous with the exterior put this face down line up these raw edges And then we're going to stitch along that with a quarter of an inch seam allowance again. Um, what you can do is flip this over and you can use your previous stitching as a guide. But you're going to start it right at the end here. bigger work table that's for sure okay and then what we want to do is now we want to top stitch that so flip it over like this and you want your seam allowance to be pointing upwards so you're just going to fold it up upon itself again if you're using cotton you can go ahead and press this because I'm using vinyl I'm just going to have to finger press it best I can as long as that seam is pointing up so we can catch it in the top stitching
So it looks like that. So you can see how when it's in your bag, how it's going to look really nice there. So now we want to do the same thing with the other side. So I'm going to grab my other panel here. And this one, this will be my front side and it doesn't have any pockets or anything. So then we're going to flip this over. So now your zipper pull is going to be facing the opposite direction. Line up your center marks. And stitch that with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. We're so close to being done. Take your other lining top panel and do the exact same thing. Again, I'm going to use my stitching previously as a guide and do a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Again, we want a top stitch, making sure the seam is pointing up towards the lining top panel. See, that is how it's going to be dropped into the bag, like that. So it's going to look really nice on top because it's going to match, the vinyl is going to match the vinyl of the bag. Okay, so the next step, and I'm going to go ahead and do this off camera, is I've already marked where my darts are. So you're going to go ahead and do the darts exactly like we did with the exteriors. You're going to fold it upon itself like this, match them up, sew along it, trim it. And good to go. So go ahead and do all four darts and then we'll come back and I'll tell you how we're going to finish off the lining. So I've gone ahead, I've done all my darts and this is what we're looking at. So now what we wanna do is we wanna close in our lining. So much like how we did the exterior, we're going to pin this all together. Things you wanna look out for is that you don't sew your tail into here. Don't wanna do that. You wanna make sure that is tucked inside the bag. You wanna make sure you're lining up your top panels, so you have a nice, even, continuous line there once they're sewn together. So you can see how they all match up there. So that's what I do first is I do that and I pin the top one and then I go to this side. I try to stay on top of my threads, but I seem to fail at it always. <laughs> line up these ones here, pin it. Okay, and then go ahead and line up the darts. Remember, you kind of got to push one 
inside out so they cup together. Try to open up the seams if you can. And if this isn't perfect, it's the lining. Nobody really notices it, so that's okay. Line up those darts. Now, one thing I wanna make sure I do on the bottom is I wanna leave an opening for turning. So I'm just gonna to mark to remind myself, I wanna leave from about, I'm guessing, there to there, and hope that's big enough. <laughs> Okay, and then again, make sure your tail is inside. I have sewn it on the outside, trust me. It's, you just would wanna cry. Make sure it's stuck inside. I kept my tail rather long. The pattern says to only make it three inches, but I like mine to be a little bit longer. So one thing we're also going to do different when sewing the lining is at the top we are going to start with a half inch seam allowance until we get about the middle of the side of the lining. And then we're going to branch out to about five eighths of an inch seam allowance and the reason why we do that is so our lining is a little bit smaller than the exterior of the bag so the lining will not sag nearly as much. Just gives it a little bit tighter of a look. Okay. So here we go, we're gonna start at half an inch. Back stitch at start and stop, of course. Okay, make sure I can feel that zipper over there, okay. And then I'm gonna start branching out to about five eighths, guessing. Guessing about where that is, because I haven't marked it. Then try not to have any um, nips or tucks or anything, but again, it's the lining. Nobody's gonna notice it if there is one. Back stitch a couple times when you hit your mark where you're gonna be leaving it open on the bottom. Over to the next mark. Start about five eighths of an inch. Oh, of course my thread is out of its Still at five eighths of an inch, but about here I'm going to start going down to half inch again. So you want to be at a half inch before you hit um, where your top panels are. Back stitch like that. And let me just see if it says. Um, if it says to clip it. It doesn't say you have to. I'm going to anyways, except for on the bottom, I'm not going to trim it. So I'm gonna trim it down to about a quarter inch seam allowance. To right about there, and then I'm gonna stop. Just to reduce the bulk on top. And there we go. There is our lining. We did it right. All right, the home stretch. So now you're going to pull out your exterior and your lining, and we're going to put it all together. So you want to be mindful of where your zipper is. So we're going to put this inside the lining. So where your zipper pocket is in the back, that's where I want the back of it to be. So we got to make sure we put it in this way so the front is forward so unzip your zipper panel all the way down it's nice and open like that take your bag your exterior of your bag and put it inside with your zipper pocket at the back your your lining zipper pocket that is because this is ensuring that my zipper is going to be on this side to open you want to make sure you tuck your handles in. You do not want to catch the handles into the seam. So you're going to have to feel because there's really, we're going to be doing half an inch and there's not much 
difference between the two. So very important, we do not accidentally sew those in. I got some glue there, which I will get off later. So tuck the handles in. And it's gonna feel tight and that's because we made the lining smaller than the exterior. That is what we want. So take your side seams first, match them up, open them up, with the exterior and the lining, like so, like that. And I like to use two clips to hold those together. Okay, flip it around the other side and this just guarantees it's gonna be centered. Make sure everything's tucked in, pull it nice and tight, and evenly distribute all that fabric all the way around. Put this up so you can see what I'm doing a little better. Okay, so I'm gonna go off camera and I'm gonna go around and finish pinning all this because I need to go get some more clips. And I'll come back and we'll put, we'll do this. All right, let's pin this down. So I've got the exterior all pinned around. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go around that with a half inch seam allowance. So I find it easiest to do it from the inside of the bag. So I'm just kind of pull this side out of the way, find a place to start and have at it. Make sure you're feeling for, you can kind of see where the rivets are too. So you wanna make sure you're not getting that, uh, the handles there. It's very, very close. You can feel it. Make sure your needle is down if you have to adjust it all. So make sure you're aware of where that is and that you don't slow through the handle. there. I think the next time I do this bag, I think I would probably put the handles even a quarter inch lower again. Or make the rivets a little bit lower so they will bend better, but we're good. Okay, so then you just want to go around you can see where my handles are. It went up a little bit, but that's because my it's like right there and I'm scared to get it and it'll be fine. It'll work just fine. It's like that on every single one. So make sure you've caught all the way around this way. Make sure on the inside you've caught all the way around there. And then you're going to take your sharp scissors. I have to go get mine and you're going to trim this down to a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So go ahead and trim your top seat down to there. Okay, so I've gone and I've trimmed it all around. Now we're ready for the pump part. Get your arms ready. This is the exercise of the day. Actually, this one I don't think will be too bad, but turn your bag through the bottom.
didn't know what that was, but that's the strap I'm feeling. <laughs> I'm so used to putting the straps on at the end of the bag. I rarely have them on, on the bag already. Okay, oops. Okay, so at this point, you just wanna check all along here. That's the right face, I gotta think. Yeah, right where the lining joins. To make sure all your stitching is all along here. Oh no, sorry, right along this line here. Make sure it all looks good. If there's no holes, give it a slight tug to see. And then pop your lining into the bag. What I'm gonna do is, you have the zipper in, make sure the zipper is all the way in. You're gonna kinda just fold this down like this. And I am going to clip it. This is where we are going to top stitch. And you can see, again, I would have done these a little bit lower. Or maybe, actually, I would have done the rivets just a little bit lower because it's just going to be really tight to get in there. We'll get in there, but it's going to be tight. I got my tape there too, which is ugly. I'll have to get off later. Just kind of finger roll that seam out and finger press. We're gonna have to be really careful when we're going along there. Again, I think I may have did my rivets too high. That's probably my fault, but we'll get through it. Okay, so I'm gonna go around and I'm going to finish clipping that all the way around and then we'll come back and top stitch it. I got it all clipped around the outside. Um, again, I've made my life a little harder because I rivet, put my rivets too high, so that's that's gonna be a real treat for me, so don't do that. <laughs> but it'll be fine, we'll get through it. And these side seams, just so you know, are going to be really, really thick, especially if you use vinyl like me. So make sure before you start doing this that you check your bobbin because there's nothing worse than running out of bobbin thread right when you're trying to top stitch. Okay, here we go. Wish me luck. Again, top stitching is the whole reason I got an industrial. And you want to make sure that zippers, that zipper tail is not hanging out anywhere. you're adjusting, your um, needle is down. Okay. So I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller here. Oh, come on girl. There we go. Okay, we got through that. Definitely put the rivets lower. I think I measured from, I should have measured from the bottom of the handle rather than the right where the if it seems like it cut out, it's because it did. I forgot to put my phone on Do Not Disturb it, and my husband called me. That's okay, he's bringing home dinner, so. Okay. So continuing on, I made it past the first strap. I just made, made my seam allowance a little bit narrower there, and it's not going to be seen because the strap is going to handle it, or is going to hide it. Past the second end of the strip. I 
again, not the prettiest there, but Maxima stitches go really small. But the way the strap's going to be, it's going to hide it all. It's not going to be easy. sections to go. Whew, working up a sweat. Okay, deep breaths for at the next strap. <laughs> okay, we've got her figured. And I like to show all my mistakes so everybody can learn from them and see how to get through them. stressful again not something from the pattern it's because I made a mistake but we got through it the eye doesn't even look bad where you will notice it mostly is on the opposite side by the straps on here but really you just see where it kind of goes up a little bit it doesn't look bad at all not too bad So because I'm using a, a bonded poly, I just burn it. I usually have a little burner to fray my edges, but I ran out of batteries. Okay, so before we seal up the bottom, let's just kind of put it all into place. And zip it up. And see how she looks. She looks pretty good. And you can see here where my straps were, how it goes up. But do you know what? It consistently does it on all four her straps. So consistency is good. But really, you're not going to see it because the straps are going to be in the way. And on the inside, you can't really notice either. All right. So that all looks good. I'm going to open it up again. And we, now we want to seal up this hole in the bottom. So this is where my trick with leaving the bottom of the lining open. So pull that pocket out and then reach in and grab where the lining is open on the bottom and pull it through the bottom of the pocket. This is to avoid, I mean, you can also turn it under and then top stitch it, but I always get an ugly ridge and I don't like that. So this is what I do to get away from that. Okay. Also, I forgot to mention, because I was using vinyl and those um, edges were very thick, I was using like a five top stitch. Like it, I was using a huge top stitch to get through those layers. And the top stitch looks like it's maybe a three or a four. So Okay. So that's done. Shove that bottom back into the bag and then take your pocket and we're just going to top stitch it because it doesn't matter if the pocket has a ridge in it because you don't see the bottom of the pocket ever. Well, I guess unless you're pulling it out, but okay. So I'm just going to top stitch that about a quarter or an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Back in. 
So there it is. That is the Pelican Tote by Bagstock Designs. This is the fancy edition. It's a um, upgrade, I believe, on the website. I don't remember when I got it. Again, if you're doing this, don't do the rivets this far apart. Put them closer together because that was the stressful part of me because I did my measurements wrong. But other than that, turned out pretty darn nice. I'm happy with it. So yeah, the fancy edition has the fancy straps like this and the recessed zipper. So I hope everybody enjoyed this video. I know the Pelican Tote was a requested one, so I was happy I got an order for it. I'm sure my customer will love this bag. And um, yeah, if you haven't already subscribed, give me a thumbs up, leave a, a comment if you like. I would love to hear from you. Um, yeah, thank you everybody. Thank you Namrata for allowing me to do this tutorial as well. Again, this is the Pelican Tote by Bag Stock Designs. Thanks everybody, bye.